Okay, we've got a lot to cover today, so I'm going to jump right in. Welcome, hello, thank you for joining us today at Best Practices for Query Performance Testing and Tuning with Pinecone. My name is Amanda Wagner. I am the Senior Community Manager here at Pinecone, and we are thrilled to have you. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Pinecone, Granted, because you're here, I assume there is some familiarity. Pinecone is a vector database that makes it easy to build high performance vector search applications. Now, before we get started, we have a few housekeeping rules. Number one, I ask that you use the chat for chat. Feel free to introduce yourself, say hi, let us know what you're building with Pinecone. But when a question arises, we ask that you add all questions into the Q&A portion of the Zoom and not the chat. Uh, I'm sure you will have a lot of questions. We try to get to as many as possible, reserving around 15 minutes at the end of our webinars for Q&A. And this just helps us stay organized and see all of your wonderful questions. If you miss something, do not worry. This event is being recorded and will be shared with you via email after the event. We also share all of our event content on our social media and YouTube, so if you have not subscribed or followed, I highly suggest you do so today. In that post-event email, there will also be an event survey. It takes roughly 60 seconds. Please fill that out. Let us know how we're doing. We're always trying to bring you more content, uh, and better our abilities. Now, if you have questions after the event, we ask that you put them in our community forums. I will add the link in the chat after this. So yeah, feel free to ask away. Now, without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Brian. Brian, do you mind introducing yourself and getting us going? You were on mute, and I was telling you you were on mute while being on mute. <laughs> awesome. Uh, hi, everybody. Once again, I'm Brian Nauheimer, co-founder of KMW Technology, and it's great to be here. All right. I'm just going to jump in and start sharing. OK. All right, so um, who is KMW Technology? For those of you that don't know, we are search and AI professional services. We've been around for uh, over 12 years doing you know, mainly search engines and search engine related technology you know, implementations, um, optimizations, and we do a couple of main areas. So custom application development, fixing existing clusters, relevancy, and search performance tuning. That's the big one we're gonna talk about today. So you know, feel free to check us out on kmwlc.com and we'll show more of our stuff at the end. All right, so we're here to talk about search performance. And the first thing to talk about is search performance matters. So for any of you out there who've been building an application and you know, have gone through the experience of taking something live, it can be kind of an exciting process, right? It's almost like a rocket ship taking off. You've been working for months, maybe longer. You're about to, to get this thing out there in front of people. Maybe it's gonna be on an app store. Maybe it's gonna be on the internet. Maybe it's just in your enterprise. Whatever your use case is, it's a very exciting time. And once we let that thing out the door, you know, once we launch, um, we want to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward application that we have. The other funny thing about rockets is that um, if they're not going fast enough, it's very hard to leave Earth's gravity. So that's another reason we, we want to use the, the rocket analogy here. For search engines, it's the same thing, right? You want to make sure for your whole application that you're moving fast enough because people really do care about search performance. Okay, who is this for? I mean, really all of you. We're, we're so excited that everybody could be here today. Um, what we're gonna focus though is um, talking about search performance tuning for people who have an application in production, for people who are getting ready to be in production, for people who just wanna learn more about performance testing, or if you wanna learn more about Pinecone, we're gonna talk a lot about Pinecone today too. So just a quick note on our agenda. Um, what we're gonna talk about is one, why do we query performance test? Two, discuss how Pinecone scales. Three, tuning Pinecone. There's a lot of different ways, but we're gonna just 
cover a couple of tools and approaches. And four, which I think is the best part, is going to be uh, the demonstration. And then Kyle um, from our team is going to be walking us through two different scenarios and actually doing um, some live query performance testing just so you get an impression of what it's all about. OK, so starting off with why should we performance tests? All right, one of the big reasons is that users have expectations, right? Everybody has an expectation of how long something should take. Now, Pinecone might be used somewhere within like a larger application, right? So your, your users might actually be other system components or, or something else. But at the end of the day, people are going to expect your solution to be performing at a certain level. And, and the funny thing is that those expectations generally don't change, even if some of your factors do change. And what can change? Things like data volume, things like the number of, of users using your system, user adoption. So we talk about performance testing is so critically important because it's the only reliable way to ensure that you're hitting your target service level. So today we're going to focus really in on query latency, but we want to cover a couple other ones that are really important for any um, application that's using a search engine or a vector database inside of it. So one of those is index creation time, the amount of time it takes to actually get all of your content into the system. Two is update latency. So I'm updating some of the records I already have, some of the vectors I already have in Pinecone. And the other one is query latency during updates. So that's obviously just a combination of the other two. But this is generally when your system is under the most load. So it's a really important time to pay attention to as we're looking at you know, potentially problematic areas within our application. So when we talk about query performance, we really want to make sure that we understand two basic concepts. One of them is query latency, and the other one is query throughput. And these are different, right? Query latency is what we think of when we, we just, you know, when we run a, a query, right? Query request is made. The, you know, Pinecone is going to do its, its ANN search. It's going to return some results. That round trip, that's our query latency. Query throughput is how many of those requests are happening at the same time. And we usually talk about that in queries per second. So while those are two different measures, they do interact. And the big piece to note here is that if a system does get overloaded, if you have you know, too much throughput than, you, than your size to handle, then your query latency often does go up, goes way up. In addition, you might have failed requests too. So you know, failed requests, errors, these are things that we see when we're not sized appropriately. OK, so the second item that we're going to talk about is how does Pinecone scale? So we're talking about you know, query performance tuning and, and testing. But when we're actually doing that tuning, what knobs do we have to work with? Right? That's what we want to understand how Pinecone scales. So we'll just do a little review here. I would say, if you haven't already, go watch the James Briggs videos because they're awesome and he's awesome. But we'll, we'll do our best to, to introduce a couple of concepts. So first piece is the initial sizing. Right, You have. Um, you're getting started with Pinecone. I'm sure a lot of you have already you know, been through this part of it, but you need to initially set up an index. And how do you do that? So the first question is, how big are the vectors that I'm using? Right? And this is generally um, thought of in dimensions. And we'll talk a little bit more about you know, some of the standard dimensions, but this is a function of your, of your model. The second one is, how many vectors are you going to have? And this is really about your data volume. Right? So whatever your initial set is, this is what we have to, have to consider. The third question is, how many vectors does the pod type support? This is specific to Pinecone, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. And if you look at all those three factors, then you can kind of figure out how many pods do you actually need. So this table is taken from the support docs um, at Pinecone, and it just gives a couple of the, the standard dimensions you know, um, for models, and then basically it estimated, because it can vary, estimated max vectors per pod. So this helps us plan out how many vectors we're actually going to put inside of our pods. And the pods are different, right? We have S1, P1, and P2, and they have different performance characteristics. So this is definitely one of those knobs we can tune. The S1 is what everybody gets started with in their free tier, but you might be able to go to these P1 and P2s if you need better performance. All right, now we're going to talk about um, scaling. All right, so there's another knob, right? How do we scale for content? There's two, there's two ways. So one is vertical scaling, right? So if you have a set of Pinecone pods already, you can vertically scale them, which, and it makes them increase by you know, these options. So 2x, 4x, 8x, this is what's available. This is really nice because if you're just getting new content into an existing index, you can do this on the fly. You don't have to go through the process of re-indexing all of your content. 
The caveat here though is if you do scale up, um, forever are you stuck at that level, you know, the, the 2x, the 4x, the 8x um, with that index. So if you want to scale back down, you would have to do that by creating a new index. The second way that we can scale for additional content, you know, more, more, more vectors coming in is horizontal scaling. Um, and this, you know, basically this is just recreating a new index. So, you know, as the example we have here, we have index A at three pods, we're going to index B at five pods, um, and then, you know, uh, index C, we've even changed pod types, you know, and now we have eight of these P1, um, P1 pods. So horizontal scaling basically means I'm just going to create a brand new index and put all my content in there, and then I'm going to actually cut over. Um, what's nice about Pinecone is we do have this ability to use a collection that takes all of that content that's stored and then deploys that out to a different set of pods. So that makes that, that um, the setup of a new index like very easy, but that is how we do horizontal scale. Okay, so we talked about what happens when more content comes in. Let's talk about what happens when we have um, more users or more throughput coming in, right? So the way that we address that is with a concept called replicas. So um, if you look at, my graphic here, this index right here, this is, you know, this is the, the beginning part of the index and index is, consists of pods. And so every um, Pinecone index has one replica. But if you know you're getting additional, um, additional throughput and you wanna be able to have resources to serve those queries, then we can add replicas. And that's basically just making a copy um, of, the, of the original index. And you can, you can add multiple of these. The other nice thing about this is that when you've gotten through that period of high throughput, um, you can get rid of these. So, you know, like the, the classic example is, you know, Black Friday, you know, we have this, people have five, 10, a hundred times more uh, users than they normally do. You could like scale up with a lot of replicas and then scale those back down. Okay, so we've talked about, you know, our, our knobs that we can tune. Let's talk about the process. Like how do we actually go through and tune our Pinecone application. So the first thing that we want to talk about is defining our performance target. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that we never want to define performance on a single query. Single queries can, can do, you know, have a range of, of what they're going to do, but we want to look at a percentage. So P95, we want to look, what is the 95th percentile coming in? At? Um, and that's an important metric. So some people, you know, depending on your requirements, maybe you're looking more like a P99 or 99.9, .9, depends on, on, you know, how, how important it is. But we never want them to look at one or a handful. We want to actually look at quite a few queries to really understand our performance. So our example here, um, P95 under 100 milliseconds at 10 queries per second. And that other important piece, we always talk about um, our performance target as specific throughput. It doesn't make any sense. Of Second item, we're going to define our test scenario. So, what does that query look like? Um, you know, think: Are you using filters? What index are you going against? What is that index size? And again, what is our query throughput? Third item is we want to make sure that we um, we have test queries that we can execute. Right. So, you can, there's multiple ways you can do this, but you definitely want to have a representative set of queries so that you're you're replicating what's actually going to happen in the real world. If you're already in production and you have actual queries, this is a great way, this is a great use for them as you can replay them and, and understand exactly what your system's gonna do. Fourth item, build the candidate test indices. Um, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Fifth item, um, set up the query load testing tool. We'll talk about that as well. And then we actually take a measurement, right? And this is a pretty simple process. What do we do? We establish our tests, we run our tests, we get our metrics, we evaluate them, we change stuff, we do it all over again. Okay, so now we're just gonna focus a little bit on the tooling side of the house, just so everybody's aware of kind of what's necessary in order to do this if they wanna do this themselves. So tools needed to run query tests. One, a pine cone index. Pretty hopeful everybody's got one of those. Um, two, something to feed vectors into pine cone. Um, you know, and this, obviously people can, can do this with a, with the shell script or you know a lot of different tools to do that but we're thinking now in the production capacity of like how i'm actually going to pump this in and what does that look like and then the third item is something to query pinecone and report metrics and that's where we'll spend most of our demo time looking at the query load test tool so just a quick shout um, on ingestion uh, there's multiple tools you can use in today's demo we're going to use lucille 
Um, most people probably haven't heard of this. This is something that we've built at KMW Technology just specifically for this purpose, for feeding data into um, vector databases and traditional um, search engines as well. Um, it's built in Java because a lot of those traditional search engines are, um, are already um, based in Java. And uh, like I said, it's Apache 2, check it out. Um, if Java is not your thing, um, you can certainly be using other tools. Like there's lots of ETL tools out there, uh, but we also encourage folks to you know, roll your own. Pinecone comes with some great um, clients for both uh, Python, Java, and JavaScript. The other piece, right, the other big tool that we need is a query load testing tool. And for that, for today's demo, we're gonna show Gatling. We are not in any way affiliated with Gatling. The only reason that we're showing this is because this is the tool that we typically use when we do work with customers and, and try to figure this stuff out. We got exposed to it two years ago on a customer project. We liked it and we've, we've kept using it since. Um, the scripts are written in Java, Kotlin, or Scala. has really nice visualizations. And one of the things that we really like about it is that there's an open source version so that if you want to use that, you know, basically in your development process, that's great on like, you know, like a single node. But then if you have to scale up, and go you know, much bigger with it, there's an enterprise version. And then you can actually get these like really high query per seconds being produced and you can do it in different data centers. And so it's just a nice, easy way to snap in. Um, if you're not interested in Gatling, there are other tools too. K6 is a great tool we used um, on a couple of projects last year. And then I know um, from, from folks who've done a lot more on the Python side, Locust is another great alternative as well. Okay, so just to walk through, you know, what are what do we recommend as the best practices around uh, query performance testing? One, make sure you automate all those tests for key performance metrics. Let's not have just some person running queries and saying if it's good or bad. That's not how we do it. We want automated tests. We want hard numbers. We want percentages. Um, two, run the tests at a variety of throughputs. So, you know, you start off with what you think is reasonable, like how many, how much. How many users are actually going to come and use the system? How many queries per second is realistic? Then we might want to say, what does you know, much bigger success look like? And then maybe what does catastrophic success look like, right? Like what happens if, if we just, this thing blows up on Hacker News and everybody and their brother is coming in to check it out? We want to make sure that we're running this as a variety and really get some good information out. Third part is you know, simple enough. If you're going to go ahead and build these things, run them, right? make them part of your CI CD process or your, your QA and release process. And, and we emphasize that one um, because it's really helpful to know what your performance is in the context of a new feature that you're rolling out. So if you're doing you know, like a big release and you have multiple features that are coming out, it's really nice to know, you know what point did my, did my performance suffer? And the, and the way to do that is to make sure that you're doing these regularly and you're doing these as you're building your, your, your functionality out. That said, we have the last bullet point. I think this is an important one too for folks who are a little bit newer to the process. Don't do this too early. So if you're still building out your POC, if you haven't got all your pieces connected to each other yet, that's not really the time yet to be, to be doing the performance testing that we're talking about here. You kind of want to do this when you're a little more baked and you're trying to optimize. Okay, um, that's, that's kind of the, the background we wanted to cover. I'm going to hand it over to Kyle right now. And he's going to walk us through our demo. Thank you, Brian. Um, my name is Kyle Marcotte, and I'm an engineer uh, at KMW Technologies. And um, what I'm going to be doing today is, is walking through the, the demos that we've prepared. We have two scenarios that I'm going to share with you um, for the query performance testing. Uh, so the first is um, kind of just a, a straightforward uh, semantic search use case using Pinecone. Um, and we have a test prepared that I'm actually going to run multiple times against uh, different Pinecone indexes uh, with different performance characteristics. And we're going to see, we're going to ramp up uh, throughput with that test, and we're going to see um, which configurations um, are able to handle the highest throughput. Uh, so we'll walk through that. And then we're going to have a second scenario uh, where we kind of show having a performance test that establishes a uh, baseline for kind of a more complex use case or um, a fully baked application uh, where Pinecone is being used in concert um, with another system. In this case, uh, we've set up a hybrid search use case uh, with Pinecone and Elasticsearch. And we'll run a performance query test against that um, 
and see how the system is doing um, overall. So for this first scenario, the semantic use case uh, scenario, um, we've, we've set up a query performance test um, that's doing an approximate nearest neighbor uh, search against a, an index that we've prepared. Um, the test index um, is an index that has 10 million vectors, um, and they're from the MS Marco passages uh, data set. Um, and the vectors have been pre-generated with an all MPNet. Uh, Just a uh, quick one, Kyle, I don't think we're sharing yet. Thank you. Thank you, folks in the chat. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, so I'm sharing the deck now. Um, so I was just talking about the the index that we prepared um, and uh, the where um, the pre-trained model, the the um, the pre-produced uh, vectors that we used to build the um, index, and uh, the the actual scenario that we're going to do um, is a query. Uh, query performance test where we have a latency target of 100 millisecond latency. Um, and as Brian was saying, our latencies are always in the context of um, a given throughput, um, and we're targeting uh, 10 queries per second throughput. So what I'm going to actually walk through uh, for this is uh, very quickly um, just, just how we built uh, the index. Um, the fact that we used an ETL tool um, so that we could build the index uh, multiple times. Um, and have a repeatable process for our test. Um, so I'm going to show that. Um, and then I'm going to actually show the test that we've uh, set up. Um, and the test, um, although I said that our, our target throughput was 10 queries per second, um, when we achieve that, um, I'm not going to be satisfied with that. I'm going to be greedy. And I'm going to want to have a system that can scale up beyond that. Um, and so the test is going to um, ramp up to 100 queries per second. Um, and um, if, if we're successful there, we're going to try to ramp up to 500 queries per second. We're going to look at which kind of uh, pinecone configurations we're going to need um, to make that successful. So the first part, I'm going to um, actually kick off uh, Lucille for our ingestion. And then while that is uh, getting started, I'm going to um, just briefly show the, how we've configured Lucille to make this possible. Um, Lucille is an ETL framework, and it consists of three components. Uh, the components are a connector, a pipeline, and an indexer. Um, the connector uh, is the thing that gets the data from wherever it's stored. So like I said, we had um, vectors that have been pre-generated, and we have them stored in S3. So we have a connector that can retrieve them uh, from S3. And that connector publishes uh, the documents that were retrieved so that they can be processed by a pipeline. Um, we have a very simple pipeline um, for uh, what we did here. It's just doing a little bit of cleanup um, of the data before it sends it to Pinecone. Um, the pipeline is uh, the, the part that does like transformations and stuff, but for this uh, demo, um, it's very simple. And lastly, we have an indexer, uh, which is the piece that is responsible for uh, sending the data to the destination. Um, and for um, this uh, test, um, we've implemented a Pinecone indexer um, that is able to send uh, the data to Pinecone, and that's using the Pinecone Java client, um, which we've uh, configured here to uh, point at the index that we're building. Um, and I'm just going to uh, take a look at um, the process that I kicked off. Um, and we're going to see that it's already running and it's uh, reporting to us how it's doing um, as it's running. And so it does a couple of things. As soon as it starts uh, publishing the documents and sending them through the pipeline and indexing them, it uh, reports how long it took to start that. And then while it's going, um, it reports uh, kind of in terms of performance, the metric that we care about most um, when we're building an index. Um, the indexing throughput. So we can see um, every minute or so, it's reporting to us um, the rate of documents um, getting through. And so I'm not going to wait for this index uh, to be um, fully built. Um, I already have one that's built, um, and we're going to use that for the query performance test.
Um, so here I have a couple of uh, query performance tests that have been prepared uh, for this demo. Um, and like I was saying, what these tests are going to do um, is they're going to send queries um, to an index that we built and um, ramp up the throughput. Um, so I'm going to kick the first one off, and then I'm going to look at the index that it's querying. So the index here is our um, KMW MS Marco uh, 10 million S1 demo. Um, and so this index already has 10 million vectors in it. Um, and the, the, the test that I've uh, kicked off is going to be running against this index. Um, and uh, the vectors in this index are 768 uh, dimensions. Um, and these this is an S1 uh, pod type index. And um, the number of pods that we have um, based on the recommendation um, to fit the 10 million vectors is uh, two. And so the 10 million vectors fit in this index, um, but we'll see how it's doing in terms of uh, supporting the query throughput. Um, so it's still setting up the test. Uh, so, so one of the things that we try to do um, when we're doing a query performance test is limit um, the amount of variables. Um, and so one thing is network latency. So we actually run the test um, in the same region, in the same cloud region as where the index resides. Um, so that we're not having like latency like from my machine um, running out there, like um, altering like the results that we get. Um, and so it should be starting up um, in just a few moments and we'll see how it's doing. Uh, so it's ramping up right now uh, to the 10 queries per second. Um, and we can see that it's doing okay. Um, so the, the blue line here is the request that it's sending out. So our test um, is sending out 10, 10 queries per second. Um, and then the, the green area is the successful uh, responses uh, coming back. So we can see that it's keeping up with the workload um, at 10 queries per second. Um, but in a few moments, we're going to start ramping up to 100 queries per second, and we're going to see um, what happens there. This is also reporting uh, the latency here. Um, and so we're doing OK here uh, right now. But as we start ramping up to um, a higher throughput, um, we're sending out uh, requests at the higher rate. Um, and uh, the, the index that we have um, isn't keeping up with the workload. Um, so we're getting to 100 queries per second. Um, and most of the responses are failing. Um, and our latency, um, even for the successful responses, um, has gone up uh, drastically. Um, so we're really not keeping up with this work workload. Um, so we were doing great at 10 queries per second, uh, which is a lot. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm, I'm greedy and I want to go to 100 queries per second, and we're not succeeding there. So we're going to uh, go and use um, a different uh, index. Um, and the way, the way that I would do this is, um, so I had my S1 index, um, and I want to create a different index that has different performance characteristics. Um, and I'm actually going to switch pod types um, and use P2 pods, um, which uh, support lower query latency um, and um, can, on an individual uh, basis, handle uh, higher throughputs. Um, and so I could rebuild um, another index again um, with the ETL framework, but I already have uh, the vectors in Pinecone. Um, so an alternative thing that I can do is create a collection. Um, and so um, I've actually already created a collection, but um, this, this is how I would create a collection. We can go and see, and I have a collection here, which is a snapshot um, of, of the index. And then from that index, I can create um, from that collection, I can create another index and choose a different pod type. Um, and so I've done that. And here I have um, an index with P2 pods. It has the same uh, 10 million vectors. Um, and uh, the, the P2 pods um, on an individual uh, pod basis, um, uh, the amount of vectors that we, that we fit in them um is uh lower so i actually have 10 pods instead of two pods um so I, so i have a bigger cluster um but i should be able to support a much higher throughput and so i'm going to kick off um another uh test that's going to be running against that index and we're going to see how it does as it ramps up
So this should take um, about a minute to ramp up here. Um, and, and another thing uh, that, um, while this is ramping up, that I'd just like to point out. So, for the sake of the demo, we're doing, um, you know, we've we've greatly compressed um, the amount of time that we're using uh, to run these tests. Usually, we like to run them for like a longer period of time, um, but for the sake of the demo, we're shortening that. Um, so, as we ramp up, we're kind of staying at each uh, threshold for just about thirty seconds, uh, just so that we can see. Um, how things are doing very quickly. Um, and that's what's happening here. So uh, with the new index, um, we're ramping up again uh, to the 10 queries per second. Um, and we're seeing that it's uh, doing well um, while it's getting to 10 queries per second. We can also see that the, um, the response times with the uh, different pod type are um, much faster. Um, these support um, much lower uh, query latencies, both on an individual basis and at higher throughputs. Um, and we'll see how this index does um, at the, the higher throughput level um, in, in just a moment. So we're starting to ramp up to 100 queries per second. Um, and as we're ramping up, um, we can see that it's already doing better than the, the, the previous configuration. Um, and we're actually keeping up with the workload. Um, so we have the, um, we're at the 100 queries per second, and we're seeing um, just about 100 responses um, coming back uh, successfully at the same time. And as we were ramping up, we had a few um, kind of outlier um, responses that took a little bit longer, but um, otherwise we're, we're keeping up with the workload at, at very low query latency. Um, so this is good. Um, and like I said, I'm greedy. I want to ramp up to 500 queries per second, and let's see if we can do that. So we're ramping up now, um, and we're doing okay um, at this point. Um, but once we get uh, close to 500 queries per second, um, we're not we're not keeping up with the workload anymore, um, and we're starting to see the request latency uh, go up uh, drastically again. Um, so with this configuration. You know, we supported much higher throughput than the previous one. Um, we were we were doing great at 100 queries per second, um, but we're not uh, quite there with 500 queries per second. Um, so we need to scale up further. Um, and I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to go back um, to my test, and I'm actually going to kick off one more test, um, but then I'm going to look at uh, what we can do to to scale up. So if we go back to Pinecone. Um, so one of the one of the ways of scaling uh, that that Brian shared um, was scaling for throughput. Um, we do that by we can do that by adding a replica. And so if I configure the index um, right now, I was running with uh, just one copy of my index. But if I add a replica, I'll have two copies of my index. And um, I'm going to do that now. And when I add the replica, um, it's going to scale up uh, to that additional replica. Um, and that um, may just take a, a few minutes. Um, but for the purpose of the demo, I've already prepared an index um, that has a second replica. So that's a copy of the index. Um, and once the data is replicated, um, both copies of the index can service queries. Um, so we can um, service higher throughput. And hopefully, um, we can do fine with uh, 500 queries per second. So we'll go back to the test that I kicked off. And it's still deploying right now, um, but it should be starting um, in just a few moments. And this is um, the same, the same data, the same queries, the same test, um, just with the additional replica. So we'll see how it does as it ramps up to 500 queries per second. Um, and just like the previous test, it's going to ramp to 10 queries per second first. And it's doing okay. Um, we're still having the the very low uh, query latencies um, at this level. 
um, but we'll see how we do um, when the, the query throughput ramps up, ramps up further. We're going to start ramping up to 100 queries per second again, um, and I expect that we're going to be doing um, just fine there with uh, still the uh, low query latencies. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if adding the replica can help um, as we ramp up to 500 queries per second. And this is uh, this is a lot of queries, right? Um, so even 10, 10 queries per second is a lot. Um, so you know this is this is the scenario where um, you're having great success and lots of people are using your application and um, you you don't want to fail because of your success. Um, so now we're ramping up to 500 queries per second. We'll see how we do with the additional replica. Um, and we're at 500 queries per second and um, our, our query latencies are generally um, still at that acceptable level. They didn't um, increase drastically the way that they did in the previous test. Um, and we're keeping up with the workload in terms of the responses. Uh, so this is really good. Um, and I'll just let this finish up and see if for the whole 30 seconds we can hold there. Um, and and we did. Um, we we managed to support uh, that level of throughput with still pretty low uh, query latencies. Um, and so this is an example of how uh, with a query performance test that's um, geared toward a specific target, um, you can iterate over it um, multiple times with different configurations until you find the one that supports um, you know your desired uh, performance outcome. So I'm going to pause here um, and let uh, Brian speak uh, for a little bit before we go to the next uh, scenario, just to give a recap. Great. Yeah, so the scenario one, just think, Kyle, thank you. That was awesome. Um, quickly, you know, the use case here, semantic search, vector query only, uh, cosine similarity queries, by the way, just for those who want to know. Um, the initial S1 index um, did support 10 queries per second, but it didn't support 100 queries per second, right? So that was uh, um, the first piece that we saw. So then Kyle moved to the P2 index, and we did support 100 queries per second. 100 queries per second is a lot. And I'd take a beat right there for a second. For anybody who's new to query performance testing, um, this doesn't mean 100 users on your system, right? This is 100 at the exact same second queries. So depending on what kind of application you have, this could be lots and lots more you know, than those 10 or 100 users, right? This could be many multiples of that. It all depends on, on the interactions that you have. Um, but anyway, so the P2 supported 100 queries per second in this use case, but it didn't support our 500 queries per second. So then Kyle went with a P2 index with two replicas and we, we achieved our desired performance. All right, Kyle, back to you. Thanks. Um, so, so now we're gonna talk about um, slightly more complex use case um, using Pinecone in the context of um, an application um, and making sure that the end-to-end the -end performance um, is acceptable while also keeping in mind um, the performance of the individual components. So we have a hybrid search use case um, where we're uh, doing a vector search and a keyword search at the same time. Um, and we're for the vector search, we're uh, using Pinecone and it's actually the same approximate nearest neighbor uh, query uh, that we were using in the previous test. Um, and we're um, using the same, the same index, the same vectors. However, the passages that were used to generate the vectors, um, we've indexed those into an elastic search index, um, and we're performing a keyword search against that index um, at the same time uh, to kind of try and get the, the best result possible um, for our users. And for this, for the end-to-end -end duration, we have a, um, a latency target of 200 milliseconds. Um, and we're going to be running that the same uh, 10 uh, queries per second as the beginning of the previous test. Um, and we're not going to ramp this test up for throughput. Um, we're just going to establish a baseline um, at this level. And so this is, uh, this is the diagram showing um, the the, the way that the application that we're testing works. Um, and so when a search request is sent um, to the application, um, it 
uh, fires multiple queries at once, um, and it distributes that query as a, as a lexical query against the Elasticsearch index, um, and at the same time, a vector query against the Pinecone index. Um, the results that come back from Pinecone are the document IDs. Um, we're not storing the document metadata in Pinecone, just the vectors. Um, so uh, to retrieve uh, the actual content of the documents um, that we get back from the Pinecone search, um, we do a uh, lookup against the document store. Um, for the simplicity of uh, this uh, test and to not have a third component, um, we're using Elasticsearch as that document store. Um, but just as easily, um, another real world application um, might, might, be, might use something else. Um, the important thing is that the, the ultimate thing that we care about is the duration of the amount of time that our users have to wait for the response to come back. So we're measuring the duration of this final uh, search response. Um, we're measuring that, um, but then we're also with the same test uh, taking individual measurements of each uh, component. Um, just to make sure that none of the underlying systems um, are a bottleneck. Um, and this allows us to establish a baseline. So I'm going to actually uh, kick this uh, hybrid test off. And we're going to see how it does. And this is using the same uh, Pinecone index um, and then um, the Elastic uh, Passages index that we prepared. So we're going to have the same sort of uh, uh, ramp up here of um, uh, distributing the test. And while that's um, ramping up, I'm actually going um, to pull up a previous run of the test uh, so that we can look at the results. Uh, so when I open this page, it's a little more complex because we were not running just a single uh, query. Um, and so I want to be able to um, look at a couple things and see how they're doing. I want to be able to look at um, how the Pinecone requests were doing, um, the, the vector search that I was running. Um, also uh, see how the keyword search against Elasticsearch was doing. Um, and also um, be able to see the, the duration of the full end-to-end full -end request. So to see the vector, um, um, as part of the test, I had annotated uh, the request that we're going out so I can um, see the vector um, queries at an individual level. Um, and I can see the 10 queries per second that I was running against those. Um, and I can see the, um, the response times are at um, an acceptable level. And I can do the same thing for uh, my lexical query. And I can see the same uh, 10 queries per second throughput. Um, and at an individual level, the, the keyword search, um, we're also at an acceptable level in terms of the, the query latency. But lastly, um, the thing that I really care about is the end-to-end the -end duration of how long people were waiting for the results to come back. Um, and so I can actually look at that here. And I have a group duration, which is the duration of the full end-to-end -end requests. Um, I can see that I was um, sending uh, 10 queries per second here, um, and that my query latencies were at, under that um, 200 millisecond uh, acceptable level. So the, the idea here is um, I have, um, we, we already did a test um, in scenario one where we were um, targeting like higher throughput um, in, in scaling our Pinecone index like um, to meet that throughput. Um, here, the idea is um, we, we have a test where we've established a baseline for like a production system. Um, and as we're adding more features to the system, uh, maybe we're re-ranking the results uh, differently or we're adding features into um, the type of Elastic or Pinecone query that we're running, um, we can always compare by repeating this test against the, the, the changes, um, compare that with our baseline and make sure that we're not uh, going off track. So I'm gonna pause here again and uh, let, let Brian uh, um, give a recap of our demo. Um, thanks. Thanks, Kyle. Um, so again, just real quick recap. This was a hybrid search use case for querying both Pinecone and Elasticsearch at the same time. Um, S1 index was fine for this use case, right? We met our performance targets, so we didn't have to twist much. 
or, or anything. Um, and the kind of the takeaway here is that a single performance test can measure a complex system with multiple components. You know, so I, I don't know anybody who's running queries against Pinecone and just displaying you know thousands of floating point numbers to to somebody, right? Like you, it's going to be within a system. You're going to be interacting. There's going to be different components that are doing different things. Um, so it's really nice to be able to have that single point to run those tests and take a look and say, as a holistic whole, you know, how am I doing in all these different parts? So I think that's that's it for our scenario two, our, our two um, uh, our two demos. So uh, Amanda, I don't know, do you want to move over to to comments and questions? Yes, I do. We've got tons of great questions in the Q and A. Uh, we'll be able to get to some of them. And again, I will post in the chat our forums link. So if you have questions after the event, you can feel free to ask them there. I'm also going to do a quick intro. Uh, Kevin is joining us on the call. He is a customer success engineer here at Pinecone. Hi, Kevin. Hello. <laughs> Great, so let's dive on in. Benedict is asking, in addition to performance goals, such as what we're discussing here, I'm also interested in metrics and evaluations, which evaluate the system WRT fulfilling the project target goals. Yeah, um, well, well, first, Kevin Butler, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Kevin's fantastic and knows more about Pinecone than anybody I know, so thank you for being here. Um, I would the metrics API. I don't know what do you what do you think, Kevin? For how, how's my system doing? Yeah, I think there's a couple of ideas there. One was the metrics coming from the pinecone side, and then the other. Uh, as I was reading that question, I was thinking about uh, as far as performance on uh, other metrics, as far as what you guys did with the KMW side. So. Um, Pinecone does have metrics. We do have metrics within the UI itself. And then if you're on the enterprise system, you do have an additional endpoint where you can draw metrics from our Prometheus servers. Um, and in the future, we're also going to, going to be working on a Datadog integration. So hopefully we're going to continue to enhance metrics as it relates to performance and uh, scale and everything that you need to manage your Pinecone index. Great, thank you. How do you improve and measure relevancy for search? Having difficulties getting Pinecone to return the correct vectors when querying, uh, do you have suggestions for improving? Yeah, so we could spend an entire day on relevance. <laughs> uh, Maybe a whole other, other <laughs> webinar on that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, we could probably spend even more than a day. So relevancy as it relates to Pinecone. Um, so there's a few facets to think about. First is the model itself that we're using to generate the embeddings. So different models have different purposes, and the data that we put into those models also have different purposes. And then finally, the um, uh, once it actually gets the embedding and puts it into Pinecone, and then, of course, your query gets uh, translated into an embedding and performs the search. And so usually that's where we're kind of thinking about when we're talking about relevancy as it relates to Pinecone. And there's a few things that um, uh, that vary there. And, and again, mentioning the modeling and, uh, but if you're doing something like an open AI, for example, and you're using the 802 model, it's a very good example for generalized text. Um, and then once we get to actual query performance as far as the quality of the results that you're getting back. Remember that we're doing a semantic kind of similarity search. So as we're talking through and much of the purpose of discussing Elasticsearch alongside Pinecone is to continue that relevance journey together and both from a semantic standpoint and from a lexical standpoint. So traditionally we always had lexical for quite a number of years now and, and we do a lot of things in lexical to be able to make lexical search very good such as synonyms and spell checks and uh, boosts and blocks and all kinds of business logic that we can implement on that side of the house. And then ultimately the vector side of the house is intended to be able to expand that query into the intent of what the user was asking for. So there's a there's a lot of uh, relevancy topics there. If you're seeing in Pinecone that you're not getting the relevancy that you really expect, a couple of places that I would look is to maybe possibly reevaluate the model, um, also reevaluate the queries, 
And then finally, within Pinecone, make as much use of metadata filters as you can, as far as things like categories, colors, the things that you can uh, subset or filter out at query time as well. And so um, those are the three main ideas I was thinking. Brian, do you have any other ideas? I'll just add one is that, you know, when we talk about relevancy testing, we do it similar to how we approach performance testing, which is that you want to actually have a measurable and repeatable process. So, you know, this, this, it depends on your use case, obviously, but, you know, one of the ideas is that you can, you can um, create different test queries for which you know what are good answers, and then you're going to be you know, using those as sets, and then you're evaluating those responses, and then you're seeing, you know, for the different stuff that you're doing, as you were just saying, Kevin, like, I'm adding my metadata filter if I've, if I've changed my model. Right. If I'm embedding new information, like one of the, we didn't talk a lot about this concept of content enrichment before you generate a vector, but you know, like, can you extract some entities and make sure that's part of your vector and put that in, and maybe that's going to improve some things. Um, so, so those kind of concepts, like you could, there's a lot of stuff you can twist on relevancy, but at the end of the day, you still need to have like a good measurable way to say, this is better, this is worse. Um, and there's, there's different approaches. For that. Kyle, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I I, I, th I think that's that's right. Like just like for the performance testing, we want to have a repeatable process. Great. And so also, um, is this from the no, this is from a different user. But also, I'm currently evaluating the usefulness of Pinecone as a memory backend for Auto GPT. Any thoughts on that? from your side, Kyle, or Kyle, Kevin, 2K names, one webinar. Uh, Kevin, I feel like you have feelings. Hey, I have a couple of feelings. Um, <laughs> so auto GPT has just gone crazy. Um, and it, it's really interesting stuff. And I've played with it my, myself. And what a, a couple of things that I would say. Um, so, uh, sorry, Amanda, the original was um, with respect to using Pinecone as a memory for auto GPT. Yes, for a back end, let me see the exact. Yeah, sorry yeah, about that. Memory back end for auto GPT. Yep. So the first thing that I would say is um, auto GPT took the world by storm and it also took our vector databases by storm. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> So the, but the reality of it is, is actually it's a really small vector database uh, as far or an index itself. Um, so one piece that I would say is don't upgrade because of auto GPT, stay on the free tier. Um, and so save some money there. And the second part of that is, yes, it works great as a backend, as a vector database. Um, and the it's actually relatively rudimentary. There's not a lot of complexity there. So you can choose to use Pinecone to experiment with it quite a bit. You don't need to upgrade to do that. And then um, I would even say that the without the, uh, at least right now, there's not a lot of complexity with respect to the vector side. So um, it's easy to use and easy to implement and then have a, have a ball. Let's see what uh, we can build with it. Great, thank you. Um, and and I agree with everything you just said. It taken vector databases by storm. Uh, for metadata indexing, initially, do we define it upon creation of pods, or uh, can we set the metadata indexing at any given time? Yeah, there was one one little piece in there, and I believe it mentioned the metadata configuration actually. Um, and so the metadata itself, the configuration, we have the notion of um, uh, selective metadata indexing is what we call it. But simply what it is, is that you're defining which fields are indexed and which ones are stored only. So if you're doing a chat GPT style application and you need to store some paragraphs of text, obviously we're not going to filter on that at query time. So what we want to do is mark those as stored only. So when you actually create the index, you have the option of adding the metadata config parameter at that time and specifying exactly which fields you want to use for filtering purposes at query time. And then all other fields will automatically be stored only. So you don't have to define both of them, just the one. And then um, I think that was everything that was, oh, as far as running it after you set up your index. So let's say you set up your index, two weeks later, you realize your cardinality is out of control. 
and um, we're having some issues with metadata. So then you can actually patch, it's a patch API endpoint, and you can actually apply it afterwards. What happens behind the scenes is it spins up a, a brand new set of pods and rewrites the index that handles the metadata configuration. And then uh, once those pods are ready, then it'll cut over automatically. You don't have to do anything on your side. So you can run that API request post index. Great. Um, how, let's see, how can we add database performance insights to this chart? Uh, is there any API or log that we can grab? Oh, you want to feel this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say the the metrics API of uh, of the Pinecone index um, while while the test is running, um, the the same way that you would monitor your system um, in production, uh, you monitor uh, that while you're running the test. So you see the test results, and at the same time, um, you're seeing the how the how how the reported metrics are doing um, while the system is under load. For this scenario, what leads you towards changing the pod versus adding more replicas to handle your 100 QPS goal? Cost, preference? Uh, cost. Um, and so we, we could have we could have scaled up the, the S1 pods um, by adding replicas. Um, we would have needed to add a lot of replicas. Um, a lot of, ultimately, with the amount of replicas that we would, would have needed to add, we would have had more total pods um, than what we needed to get the same QPS with the um, with the P P2 pods. Uh, so cost is definitely the factor that made us switch to P2. I'll just add to, I don't know, we didn't cover maybe before that, not only do you get the additional throughput support when you're adding replicas, it's also a high availability thing. Those replicas, when they come up, they're automatically placed into another availability zone, depending on which uh, cloud environment you're in. So. It's a nice little plus on top that you, you get a little bit more resiliency there. Brian wants to know, also, when doing a search on an index, what kinds of searches are available or used? Jacquard, uh, Pearson, Manhattan, Cosine? Uh, I'm sure sort of Kevin knows this, but I know Euclidean, dot product, Cosine, those are the three that I remember on Python user. Is that it? Okay. Those are three. Cosine is what we were using uh, during the test. Yeah, and cosine is most common uh, across the majority of our indexes. The the one main difference, if you do start to investigate our uh, Pinecone, what we call sparse dense, which is a combination of the lexical and semantic vectors in the same Pinecone index. That's a kind of a new another topic. But the uh, if you do use sparse dense and start to experiment with that, then dot product is a requirement for the uh, similarity metric there. Great. What is the best strategy to find the size of text document blocks in order to obtain the best balance between specificity and DB size slash query speed? That's a tough question. Um, yeah, so, so you're talking basically like what's the what's the optimal text size that I'm going to generate my vector on to, well, yeah, yeah, I don't I know. yeah we have, well, actually, if we're talking about chunking strategies as it relates to actually storing text and metadata that we do I have an article, actually, I answered this question earlier in the um, uh, Q&A. Uh, if you go to the learn section and then just do a search, it's all the way at the bottom of the page, but it's chunking strategies. If there's an article where we actually go through a lot of different scenarios and different use cases and talking about that. The short answer is it depends yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, takes a little bit of testing to kind of get through to see what's most effective with your data and with your application. I think, I think this is one of the reasons that it's really good to have a performance test and relevance test um, because something like that is very use case specific. So it's going to be specific to your application. Um, so the, the only way to find the right answer is to, is to test um, and do the work yourself. 
Right. And, and the, you can think of all these scenarios where you would just generate like way more vectors potentially than you need. Right. So like we've seen some of the models that are sl like um, sliding window, you know, so you're just getting like chunks of text, you know, for like compared to, you know, like a sentence uh, vector or a paragraph vector. Right. Like you just the amount of vectors and the amount of disk space you're going to be taking, you know, to, to put this into Python would vary quite a bit. So, um, uh, you know, awesome that Kevin's got like a uh, an article on this. I think it really, yeah, the, the granularity of like, do these queries satisfy the, you know, what you're trying to find is, is the ultimate arbiter there. And it also goes back to the semantic relevancy discussion that I saw in the chat and we were having earlier. Yeah, Kevin just added that uh, link to the chat. So you want to grab that real quick. And with that, we are on time. Uh, so thank you, Kevin, Kyle, Brian, for joining us today. It has been a pleasure, super informative. And yeah, thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.